Welcome everyone back to weekly weather updates and in today's video we're going to have a look at the latest from the live radar. We're off with the UKV, have a look at the precipitation and temperature over the next five days. As does look likely we're going to be starting to see slightly cooler conditions come around in the next three to five days time and we'll then have a look at the mid to longer range with the GFS, GM, Eastern DF and the on ensembles as we do have high pressure eventually building in around the seven to ten day time frame with that cooler air mass initially for it could to some warm if not hot we could even be seeing the middle of the month heat wave through august and that is looking very very possible and we'll have a look at that in detail in today's video so do remember if you enjoy videos make sure you like and subscribe and remember to follow me on twitter as well the links in description so do start by having a look at the live radar. You can see there's not too much going on at the moment. The precipitation is going into parts of Denmark now. That really did affect many central and northern areas earlier today overnight. Areas in the south still not seeing an absolute uh, load of rain, but there are showers around. We have seen some of that weather front, some of the southern tip of that head through some southern and eastern areas. So these areas have seen some rain, some areas seen quite a bit of rain, but some areas have seen very little. So it's not all wide, but it's soaking like we need, but it is a little bit of rain. We have got a few showers, some heavy showers breaking out in a few spots. Moving quite slowly at the moment, and we're going to continue to see these over the course of this evening. It does look like there will still be plenty of showers around over the next couple of days, and we'll continue to see some weather fronts, especially for northern areas, potentially some persistent, heavy, maybe even thundery rain moving through at times, as I said, by the end of this five day time period. As we head into the end of this coming working week, we could be going into a northerly wind spell, some cooler air masses coming in before high pressure builds in with much drier and eventually warmer weather. So if we do have a look at the two meters temperatures, you can see in the south it is pretty warm. Temperatures getting towards the mid to high 20s, which isn't too bad really, very warm in some areas, further northwards, back down more towards average high teens, low 20. So not a bad day today. With that rain falling overnight, many areas are quite nice, sunny and pleasant. So if we do now have a look at the UKV, have a look at that precipitation and temperature over the next five days. You can see the precipitation heading through in central northern areas early today, some edging into the far south through East Anglia as well, before clearing by around mid to late morning. And this afternoon, you see those few showers breaking out, some heavy, maybe a little bit thundery there through the afternoon. But elsewhere, it's pretty dry, pretty warm, before we do start to see more precipitation move through tomorrow afternoon for Northern Ireland and the Republic of Ireland, perhaps into parts of Wales during the late afternoon before we do see this weather front really start to spread in overnight Monday giving heavier precipitation quite widely through northern areas but still the south and the east holding off on that heaviest precipitation especially in East Anglia but we could still see some precipitation some heavy thundery showers breaking out through East Anglia the Midlands it's the parts of the northwest could see some very torrential rain there through early hours of Tuesday for as we head through Tuesday afternoon it does clear up but we do see a bit more precipitation move through through early hours of Wednesday. If we can see a cooler air mass start to spread in with the north, in from the north, you can see those centre of low just out in the North Sea, and those showers coming in from a northerly direction. You can see from the pressure charts that centre of low out in the North Sea, and you can see a northerly wind is starting to spread in, and we can start to see that on the upper air masses as well. Look at that much cooler air mass spreading through by Friday, but luckily it'll only last a few days before it does start to turn drier, warmer, perhaps even hotter as we head through the middle of August. A real high pressure dominant period looks likely. So if we do have a look at the max temperatures, we'll see what they're showing over the next five days. You can see this afternoon temperatures, as I said, peaking around that low to maybe mid 20s, 24, 25 degrees is possible in a few spots. And tomorrow, similar temperatures, maybe even high 20s, 26, 27, but widely high teens, low 20s. That's very similar as we head into Tuesday, maybe even 29 or 30 degrees across East Anglia. So spiking a little bit. We do have warm upper air temperatures, but with showers and cloud around, it will hold it back in a few spots. And by Wednesday, still quite warm in the far east, maybe even 30 degrees once again. Widely though, mid to low 20s, maybe high teens in a few spots. And by Thursday afternoon, you can start to see that cooler air filtering in from the north widely in the mid to high teens maybe just holding on to the low 20s in the far south in the east but at this stage 
it still does look like a decent day, but Friday it would definitely be much cooler overall. Back down to high teens, low 20s, down towards average, if not below average, widely, as we have that cooler air mass coming in for a period of time. But as we see with the, the long range models in a minute, you will see only last a few days where those temperatures start to climb again. Under higher pressure, we start to see warm, homegrown heat. And we, yeah, could be seeing widespread heat wave like conditions. Nothing like we saw. Back in July with 40 degrees, but temperatures into the high 20s, low 30s is very, very possible. So if we do start on the GFS, you can see westerly winds at the moment. We do have warm upper air masses, but because low pressure is involved, we've got precipitation and rain mixing in with it, showers. So it's going to hold those temperatures down a bit. You can see by the end of the week, northerly wind moves in, cooler air mass before high pressure settles thing down. Now, initially, you can see around this time next week, we are under higher pressure. But look at the upper air masses. We are in around average, maybe slightly below average. Um, again, if we look at the temperature deviation, you can see slightly below average in the far east. That's because we're pulling in a northeasterly wind. But if we do continue, the high pressure goes nowhere. We see those upper air conditions just start to slowly rise as we see homegrown heat. And eventually, we get the 15 degree isotherm in through many areas of England and Wales. Now, that would be very warm. That would be heat wave conditions, high 20s, low 30s, quite widely. But it's homegrown. It takes a number of days to build. It takes a good five days to build that heat. And in the longer term, we stay quite warm, but eventually start to see slightly cooler air masses coming in from the north. But you can see there, from around day seven, all the way to day 14, it looks very, very warm and dry. Very, very nice. Indeed, heat wave like conditions, very, very possible there. And again, you look at the United Kingdom look at the surface, we do run through when we did have sort of peak temperatures, Friday the 12th of August, for example, so just under two weeks time. Again, it's quite far away, but we are seeing consistency from quite a lot of ensemble members and models. You can see high 20s, widely low 30s as well, and that sort of conditions we could be seeing as we head through August. So, if we do have a look at the GM, see how that does compare. Again, a northerly wind coming in later this week, high pressure toppling in, and we see the high pressure stick around, going absolutely nowhere, and that perhaps even starts to draw in a south to southeasterly wind in the extended range, 15 degree isotherm moving in, perhaps even seeing the 20 degree isotherm get closer to the United Kingdom. Look, you can see that 20 degree isotherm is just off our south coast, very close by. And if we do have a look back, at the afternoon temperatures, you can see they're rising up into the high 20s, maybe in 30 degrees again, that's at 6 p.m. It would be higher around the peak at 3 p.m. and it would be even higher in reality because these are mid to long range models that are not particularly high resolution. So it would be very warm there on the GEM. Similarly, again with this pattern of high pressure centered over the top of us, warm air mass is building over a period of time. Because as I said, if we do move back earlier, you can see it's cooler air masses initially. Next weekend, but it's beyond that the air mass slowly increases before we get up into very hot air masses towards the end of the run. If we have a look at the ECMWF, see how that does compare. Again, high pressure in control at the moment. Low pressure running in eventually, and then we see the high pressure dominate. So at the top of us, we actually see a little bit of a, a low sitting there. Um, now, it's not going to change too many things. It's going to bring in potentially warmer air in the longer term. Not quite as warm as the other runs at day 10, but would be going warmer. Um, but you can see... Low pressure embedded within that, it would be more of a thundery, unsettled sort of heat. So it still would be very muggy, hot, heat wave like temperatures where we avoid precipitation and cloud. But with that low pressure around, precipitation, thundery rather, cloud would be more likely with that as well. So it could be going very unsettled and hot with this ECM WF run. So you can see all three runs building this high pressure in, turning things much drier and very warm potentially in the long term initially cool turning very warm if not hot and then we have a look at day 10 and then we could see a little bit of low pressure influencing there from the east of the F. but the majority have the high pressure staying firmly in control and we can see that from the ensembles if we start on the gfs you can see it's very warm over the next sort of three or four days with upper air temperatures potentially getting up towards 15 degrees and that's what's possible we could see 30 degrees in the south or the east at times this week but there's more cloud more lower pressure so mixing the air masses um, so it means it will be widely more towards the mid-20s. Then we see that big drop towards the end of this week, around the 5th of August. And that's with that northerly wind. Four temperatures slowly recover. And by around the 8th, 10th of August, we dip back above average. And then eventually we get well above average by maybe 5 degrees or so. And things are looking very warm, if not hot, in the long term. 
minimal precipitation, so it's looking quite dry. Most ensemble members have the high pressure and control, the ECMDF, which shows low pressure influence in the minority. And you can say it stays very warm in the longer term, yes. There is a spread, some getting towards that 20 degree range at 850 HPA, which give temperatures in the mid to high 30s. But the majority are around that sort of 15 degree range, which would give high 20s, low 30s quite widely. It would be very, very nice indeed. And even as longer term still remains above average. The big thing with this is we have a look at the sea level pressure. You can see, uh, sorry, if we look at the sea level pressure, you can see very high pressure in the longer term, all around 1,025 millibars, 1,020, 1,025 millibars. Bit of a more uncertainty in the longer range, of course. But majority of the runs are firmly under higher pressure. Very nice indeed. And you look at the two meter temperatures, longer term, back towards high 20s, maybe even low 30s there. And prolonged, that's the, that's the point. High pressure sitting over the top of us. We'll see consecutive dry, warm, hot days. Not good if you do need rainfall at the moment. There should be some showers at the moment and over the next couple of days, widely. But nothing crazy for those areas that really do need the precipitation. Now, if you have a look at the ECMWF, compare those ensemble members. They're slightly different. Very warm, similar over the next five days, a dip. But they take a lot longer to get to around or above average. Average sort of trends around the 10th, 11th of August, so a couple of days delayed, and in the longer term, there are more cooler runs, still above average towards the middle of August, but still, they've got quite a few runs still slightly below average in the longer term. So a bit of uncertainty exactly with that, but the signal still is for cool initially, higher pressure in control before trending above average, potentially very warm, hot, maybe even heat wave conditions, as I said. More precipitation here, but you'd expect that with 50 ensemble members, but still pretty minimal for the number of ensemble members we have here. So you can see that well reflected in the sea level pressure, very high pressure coming in uh, around the 6th of August with that 1,025, 1,030 millibar high pressure system moving in, pretty much staying consistent there, all the way to the 15th of August. So yeah, some unsettled conditions over the next couple of days, especially through the Midlands, Northern England, and Scotland, the south and the east, still generally dry, some showers around, and it could be quite warm at times, widely it will be warm above average, before it turns cooler by the end of this working week, into next weekend, turning around average, slightly below average, but high pressure is building, and that's the important thing, turning much drier, and eventually that heat will slowly build, and perhaps in around 10 days time, we're starting to get temperatures widely in the mid to high 20s, maybe even towards 30 degrees, with some much warmer summer hot sort of weather because we do have warm air masses around at the moment but mixing with low pressures in off the atlantic not particularly stagnant airflow and it does mean although it is warmer in the upper air conditions we need the very specific conditions to bring those very warm temperatures to the surface as soon as we get cloud a bit of precipitation around it does limit that a little bit so it does look really quite nice through the middle of august at this stage i must put that caveat in there because things can change we could go very we could go even hotter or we could go more towards average or cooler but the big signal the big trend we're seeing is definitive high pressure building in and that uh, looks highly highly likely so regardless of exactly how warm whether we do reach heat wave levels it looks really quite dry which i know a lot of people will probably start to be worried about in terms of drought conditions, hose pipe bands, things like that, could start to become more widespread if we do see this warm, dry, hot spell through the middle of August. And even starting perhaps around sort of the 6th, 7th of August with the high pressure at least and the warmth coming slightly later, it could be, yeah, quite a dire month um, for rainfall, uh, continuing on from a very dry July as well in the south. So anyway, thanks for watching, hope you have enjoyed, subscribe if you're new, and I'll see you again for another video soon.